title because you've heard a lot about different ideas. I'm going to talk about choices, but I can talk about the consequences of those choices. And we all know when you make a choice every day or in life, there's a consequence. So go that way, this way. And often I find that people just talk about choices. They don't talk about the consequences. So that's what we're going to focus on. Go ahead. These are the three things I want to talk about. You've heard a lot of, I'll go over this quickly, state of transportation today, and what are the major challenges, and then I really want to drill down on the proposed solutions. So you've heard a lot about problems. Thanks. Everybody knows this, the 401 congestion, Board of Trade estimates $6 billion lost to the economy every year. We'll project it. If we do nothing, that, that figure will rise to $15 billion of lost productivity in the next 20 years. Next. Here's the, the state of the, the region as we know it, the Greater Toronto Hamilton area today. Roughly 6 million people, going to grow to about 9 million, maybe 10 million in the next 20 years. 30 municipalities, four levels of government, 10 transit agencies in a big, big geographic area. And the, the thing that's really important about that is there's a bit of a debate that has always been there. Should the city of Toronto kind of go it alone or do we have to do this as a region? And my view, very strongly, is we're all in this together. People live and work in different parts of that region every single day. They cross those borders. They don't even know where they are. We're one big region. So we've got to get our act together as a region. Next. Here's one of my favorites. This is how you move 40 people. There's the exact same number of people in each of those three slides. One person per car, one person per chair sitting on the street, and one lone streetcar with nobody on the street. And the point of that slide is we've got to get real here. We have to use the road space we have far more effectively. Because you can move a hell of a lot more people in even streetcars than you can one person per car. That is a powerful slide. I remember I showed that to Mel last one, and he was the mayor, he looked at it, and he said, oh, okay, I think I get it, but what the hell am I sitting on the road for? <laughs> This is a cartoon that illustrates the number of people that go through Union Station every day by GO, by TPC, on foot, via rail, taxi, the whole ball of wax. You would need 72 lanes of expressway to equal that number. The point of that slide is the only way for us to go in the future is to invest heavily in a transit network of all types. I'm going to talk about that. Thanks. It's got so bad you have to push the streetcar. <laughs> and the reality is, many of you, I've done it, many of you have, you know, Toronto has, thank God, because of Steve here, he saved Toronto's streetcar network 40 years ago. Thank God he did, because I want to tell you something. In terms of the 11 streetcar routes that we have throughout the city, you all know where they are, Collectively, they carry far more riders per day than the entire GTHA regional GO system. Just those 11 streetcars. I'm not counting buses, subways, nothing. Streetcars are damn important to this city. Now, here's what we've heard from people all throughout the region. They want more choice, they want smarter choices, obviously. You've got to focus on moving people, not vehicles. Land use and transportation go together like a hand in glove. And this also is not only residential, but where people work. And obviously, you want to have tra traveler-oriented lines. As Steve says, you're building a network. People want to go north, south, east, west, on a diagonal throughout this region. And that's, what, that's the challenge we have ahead of us. So these are the areas we have to focus on. Next. OK, we all know we've seen this. We need more of everything. It's my short answer to you today. We've got to figure out how to pay for it. We've got to get real here. So yes, nice new subway cars. We, you've already heard you know, from, from Bill in terms of the ridership statistics that we're going to go way, way up in terms of the need for more subway lines. We need, I would rename the downtown relief line. I call it the suburban relief line. Because as Steve said, it should go all the way up to Eglinton to the crosstown at either end. And that, again, expands that network. Next. This is a slide I took that was out last summer in Edmonton. This is their LRT underground in downtown Edmonton. Some of you, I'm sure, have ridden it. Next. 
This is the Calgary system, the surface system at Grade, the City Hall stop. Uh, you know, these western cities have had these facilities for decades. We are so far behind here, it's pathetic. And we've been resting on our laurels, in my opinion, and it's time to, you know, get our act together. Next. The streetcars, as I said. This is, of course, the Spadina streetcar. Many of you ride it or are familiar with it. And even though it's out of commission right now because of the reconstruction on Queen's Key, I want to give you a very important figure here. That streetcar line carries 52,000 people a day. Anybody want to guess how many people ride on the Shepherd subway every day? 49,000? 47,700. <laughs> One streetcar line carries more than the whole Shepherd subway. And we got to be smart about, yes, we need more subways, no question. But we got to put them in the right goddamn place. <laughs> and, and we also need more LRT lines. And we need more streetcar service. And we need all-day GO train service. And we need electrification of the whole GO network. And we need that rapid transit connection to the airport that we'll get into, I'm sure, questions next. <laughs> Here's an example of a new streetcar out in uh, Portland, uh, Oregon. Uh, many of you may have been there. Fabulous what they've done. Next. Here's a slide I took in Mexico City not too long ago in terms of bus rapid transit. You know, Mexico City is a huge metropolitan area, 25 million people. They have a phenomenal subway network, but they also are building 11 new bus rapid transit lines. Why? Because they're affordable, they work great, they carry a huge volume of people at relatively low expense. And I think we need all types of transit throughout this region for all those reasons. Next. Now, here's, I, I continue to write even though I've been retired from City Hall for quite a while. So this is an article I wrote for the Star a while ago. And, and in February 2011, and uh, I used the example of the uh, Spadina streetcar in comparison to Shepherd Subway. And I asked a very serious question here. I said, is progressive city planning possible under Mayor Ford and the current Toronto City Council? I went on to say, it's not just an option, it's absolute necessity. And we gotta make sure, you collectively, and everybody in the city in this region have to make sure this happens. Next. Now here's what you've seen before. This is a couple of years ago. Boy, this is like an old movie. <laughs> the, the, the fact of the matter is, this is you know, what you've already heard here described tonight. But, you know, we stopped, we paused, we debated, we thought, we went around and around in circles. And finally, where are we now? We're back to this. <laughs> and we lost two years of endless talk. And I think, you know, you've heard Eglinton Crosstown, yeah, no question, needed, glad it's finally happening. Finch LRT, again, just that Finch West bus carries 43,000 people a day on the bus or on, fin on the Finch corridor. That, 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 that is a positive step. And the Shepherd East LRT and the Scarborough RT replacement. I can't resist, I have to say this. My own personal view is that I think there's an enormous amount of merit instead of taking the RT out of commission for four or five years and, and rebuilding it as an LRT. Just extend the subway from Kennedy straight to the Scarborough Town Center, and you wouldn't lose the service. And quite frankly, I think it'd be very cost effective, the biggest bang for the buck. Anyway, that's an aside. Next. Here, here's a map that you, you probably can't see from the back, but it's okay because I'm going to tell you about it. This is an important map in the official plan called Right of Way Widths. And you can see generally there's different <coughs> colors up here, and I'll just tell you what the code is. The normal city of Toronto right away, like out here on Young Street, is 20 meters, 66 feet. But that's not what we see throughout the whole city. It goes anywhere from 20 all the way to 45 meters and even over that. Point of that is there, there are many streets that can easily accommodate an LRT, uh, expanded streetcar service in the middle of that right away and still maintain all adequate traffic conditions. And we have to look at this as not one size, you know, sort of satisfies everything. We need different solutions for different parts of the city. Next. Here's a quick example of what you'll probably see up on Highway 7 with the bus rapid transit line at York Viva, the Viva bus service. This is what the Finch LRT would probably look like at the Shepherd LRT. Uh, and finally, we're going to obviously move those three forward. Next. And with the cross time, I've already heard all this, so I won't repeat it. Uh, I'm glad it's happening. I think, you know, 
that, uh, that, that, that it's long, long overdue. Just like Steve, I've been around a long time too. I started off as an area planner over here, a little site office at Young and Keewatin 40 years ago. Uh, and uh, at the time, you know, Eglinton, I think, was first proposed in 1980, early 80s, as, a, as, as an east-west line. We all know it was started, Harris filled in the hole. We're finally back to square one, so time to move forward. Next. Here's the map that you, uh, uh, various people have referred to called the Big Move. This is the plan that Metro Lakes put together, and I was on the board for two terms when we did that, that tries to capture, obviously schematically, the kind of transportation network that we would love to see in this region by 2031. And this includes, as I said, more subways, more LRT, more streetcar service, more bus service, bus rapid transit, all day go service. You know, just think of the go train. You wouldn't need a schedule anymore. You throw it away because every 15 minutes or every half an hour there's an electrified go train. You know, that's the kind of European system that you're familiar with. We need, if we're serious, to achieve all that, a ton of dough. Next. <laughs> so here are some ideas. This is a short list. There's 25 of these tools that have been talked about, tried, adopted, implemented all over the goddamn world, except here. <laughs> so here they are. And every single one of them is controversial as hell. I want to tell you that. Nothing is easy here. Because, why? Because we've been screwing around for the last 25 years not doing next to anything. And, yeah, 40. But 25 for sure. And, and the place keeps growing, right? And so we need more and more service, and we just keep talking. So here, let me go through this real quick. This is on a regional basis of the greater Toronto Hamilton area, because we're all in this together, as I said. Okay, so if 10 cents a kilometer road toll was adopted throughout the entire 400 series highway network, including the Gardner and the Don Valley Parkway, generates a billion dollars a year forever. If you asked people to pay one loonie a day, not an hour, a day, on all non-residential parking spaces throughout this region, so that all the Yorkdale malls, the Fairview malls, everywhere except residential, generates a billion dollars a year forever. You could obviously, I didn't put a number in here, but you could do a gas tax surcharge. <coughs> Controversial, but you guys all know who, who put gas in your car. That price is elastic. One day it's here, the next day it's there. Six months later it's over here, etc. The fact of the matter is the greater Vancouver region, the lower mainland, has done that. And it's in place. And all the money from that gas tax levy and all these other tools would be totally, 100% dedicated to transit. Another idea, of course, is you can get a better deal from the provincial government. As you've heard already, you know, we used to get uh, uh, capital and, a, and a, a large percentage of the operating funds paid for by the province. That, of course, was eliminated. Now it's zero. So all the money comes out of the city taxpayers. So that's another agenda. Here's another one that's already been mentioned by Richard. Sales tax. If you adopted a 1% or 1 cent on a dollar regional sales tax for the greater Toronto Hamilton area, only the region, not the province, and that money was totally dead fund transit in Los Angeles County. And many of you, I'm sure, have been there. You know it's the freeway capital of the world. But the reality is, with that guaranteed revenue stream, they are going to borrow that money in advance and expedite the construction of all that transit. So instead of taking 30 years to build those new transit lines in LA County, we're going to do it in 10. That's leadership. Next. OK, now I'm going to get personal because, you know, these things are just illustrative, but these are things that all of us do every single day, right? So I say, okay, let's have some fun here. If you apply a 10 cents a kilometer road toll, road pricing charge, from Oakville to Toronto, 120 bucks a month. But people already pay 121, and obviously rising, for a TPC monthly metro pass. If you're the same person in Oakville taking the boat train, you're already paying 215 a month, right? But here are some of the things that we all probably have. 
you know, cable TV, it varies, of course, according to the plan you have. Cell phone, same issue. Could be this cheap, or could be a lot more expensive, or whatever. But we don't think about it. And a lot of us, you know, go and buy a, a second cup latte or Starbucks every day for $4 or whatever, right? And I think it's important to put all this in context. What is your extra time worth? It's been referred to that Civic Action, which I'm associated with, which John Tory has launched this campaign called What Would You Do With 32? And the idea is that right now, the average commute time, daily commute in the greater Toronto area is 80 minutes a day. It's the worst in North America, worse than LA. And if we do nothing, it'll go to 109 minutes a day in the next 20 years. So roughly an extra half hour. Next. Here's a great quote. Basically, nothing's free, you know, but people tell you. 